Okay, so we are now recording. I'm going to start the meeting and I think um, I'm going to put the minutes off till the end of the meeting if that's okay because I want to, you know, maximize our time with Paul and Marlena. So, um, and Marlena, I don't have that in my inbox yet, but yes, right. Slow. So, it, my, my, no, my browser was slow. So, I'm about to forward you. It's, it's a thread that's got a, a few things in it. So um, the thread has, sorry, my browser just slowed way down. So there's two emails that we I sent you on the 30th in the same thread. Um, so I'm forwarding you the thread and if you scroll down in it, you'll see, you'll just look for the two emails that I sent you on the 30th and I'm just trying to get okay. my- Let me, off. you know what, let me, I probably can scroll down. I've got my email open. Let me just. Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning. How's everyone? Hi, Carolyn. Good, how are you? Hi. Good, thanks. Sorry, we had a very long chain, so. <clears throat> yeah, it's okay. in the ether, it's on its way, but there are two that I sent on the 30th. One has all three letters in it, and then I sent the second one a little bit later that day that had the revised version of the, the one letter we were discussing earlier today. Okay. So which should we, I just opened the one actually that you sent on the 31st. It's got the Valley Green Energy logo. Yeah, so that's, okay, sorry, 31st, yes. So that's the second one that has the revised letter. So just to, to back up, I sent one on the 30th that has three, where are we? Yes, I sent one on the 30th that has three files attached to it. And it has a slight revision to the introductory text. So I wanted I what you think, think of that one. Okay. Then, and my mistake, yes, on the 31st, then I sent just a revision of one letter that I thought might be, make everyone mm -hmm. comfortable. So okay. that, that's the stuff to talk about. Well, I wonder if we, I just wonder if we, if we start, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if we start with the the latest, most updated version that seems to be something that could, isn't quite as specific. Yes, so, to... yeah, so we've got, maybe it's helpful to just say big picture, we have to submit three versions of the letter. So is it helpful just to tell the group what we're talking yes, about? Yes, please do. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi everybody. Um, and so you're kind of coming and Stephanie started, and I started talking a little bit before everybody joined. Um, so we're working on, excuse me, getting the documents finalized that we need to make available to the public as part of this required step, which is our first big milestone of making the aggregation plan and associate, associated documents available to the public for a 30 day period of comment. And then with that, we'll do a presentation. So that's the context for this. We've got the aggregation plan finished. We've got the education outreach plan finished and we've got the model electricity supply agreement finished. So the pieces that still need to be finished are the mailing materials. And these are the letters that go out to people telling them that they're going to be automatically enrolled. Those letters have to be part of this process. They have to be written now. They're governed really by the DPU. Um, and so we have to get those finalized. There are, <coughs> because of the way the aggregation plan is written, it accommodates as much flexibility as possible for this program. So while the intention is to use Massachusetts class one RECs as the voluntary additional renewable energy that's purchased. The wording of the aggregation plan has been written to accommodate the ability to purchase other types of RECs should you choose to do so. 
It may be that in the future, there are other types of RECs that are available that you want to use that aren't available now. Um, and it also is sometimes the case that people start these programs or cities and towns start these programs with one vision and then modify that vision for whatever reason over time. And so the idea is to give you guys a plan that has the flexibility to do whatever you want, even though knowing right now your intention is to do one particular thing. Because of that flexibility, we actually have to submit multiple drafts, multiple versions of this letter. The DPU says, well, that's all well and good that you only give us this version of the letter that shows that you're going to buy extra mass class one recs, but your plan says you might do other things. So show us what that other thing would look like if you were to do it. It doesn't mean we're ever going to use this letter. Um, it doesn't mean that at all. It's really just checking this regulatory box because the DPU doesn't like generality. They like specifics. They want to see everything. So we have to submit a version of the letter that shows you're going to buy extra mass class one recs. And that's really where we've been focused. But we also have to submit a version of the letter that shows a scenario where mass class one recs is not maybe the only or isn't the thing that you're buying as voluntary recs. And then there's a third version that we have to include, which is a version that provides custom pricing to a very, very large commercial account. And that's something that's allowed by the contract that will be signed with the electricity supplier. It's a scenario that happens very, very rarely. I think in the history of years we've been doing this, we've maybe only sent such a letter two or three times. It's very rare, but because this is something that is allowed under what we're submitting to the DPU, the DPU says, we don't like vagueness. We wanna see what it looks like. So we have to actually create three versions of the letter. So just to know that, they're all three almost identical. There's just some very minor changes. The big thing that I think Stephanie wanted to talk about with you folks is the version of the letter that illustrates what the letter would look like if it were not only mass class one recs that were being purchased as the voluntary component what that scenario would look like to satisfy the DPU that we have a plan for how we would describe that. So there are a couple ways to approach that letter. The way we have historically approached it is we've shown what it would look like if you were to purchase a blend of mass class one recs and national wind recs. Now we're not saying you want to do that or that you think national wind recs are a good idea. The reason we typically do that is because that's the typical approach for communities when they don't use only mass class one recs. And it's nice and specific and the DPU likes to see specifics. It's not a commitment to doing that and it's not saying you want to do it. It's just an exemplar letter and the DPU understands this is exemplar. There's another way to do it though, which is what Stephanie and I were just talking about, which is not to be quite so specific and say that your other voluntary recs are going to be national wind recs just because everybody else does it that way, but rather to say, here's a scenario where we're buying mass class one recs and something else. And we just won't specify what the other thing is. So it shows that your voluntary recs are mass class one recs and other, but we're not gonna say what it is. So that's, those are kind of the two ways that we've come up with to handle this letter. We think if the DPU comes back and says, well, what are the other recs? I, I would be very surprised if they did that, but if they did, we would, we would provide some answer and it wouldn't be something that would slow the approval process down if they wanted to talk about it because they always have questions and they would just ask about that in the regular course of their questions. Um, I guess, I guess that's kind of, I feel like I talked a lot there. Hope there's more oxygen left in the room for you. <laughs> this is um, good. But I, I, hope, I hope that provides some helpful context. I think the really important thing I want to convey is that these are exemplar letters. This particular letter is an exemplar letter. It's not intended as a statement that Valley Green Energy has the intention to purchase Mass Class 1 RECs or that it's a validation of mass class one recs. It's not, or I'm sorry, national wind recs or other recs. It's not a validation of non-mass class one recs. 
It's, it's not any of that. It's really just to check this regulatory requirement box that exists because the DPU looks at your plan and says, wow, this is a really flexible plan. Show us what it would look like if you did one of these other scenarios that is technically possible in the universe of this plan. That's what it is. So we just have to, we just have to meet that requirement, but it's not even necessarily a letter you would, you might. might. Okay. So um, Andra had a question. She had her hand up actually first and then Adele. Go ahead, Andra. Um, so I can imagine us deciding that because we want to focus on local, that we would want to buy um, recs that are local but older and that people are not getting a high price for on their roofs, you know, for their pre, you know, 26, in 2006 Rex or whatever it is, um, in order to be able to, um, you know, prolong the value of people's rooftop solar. That would not be a class one wreck, you know, beyond the 10 year period. So I'm in favor of this. Okay, Adele. I agree with Andra. And um, I, I think what Andra is saying is that she prefers the second option that uh, Marlana um, provided, and, uh, and I do too. So uh, I vote for that. Okay. Um, anyone else have comments, questions? I would just say that it makes sense to be the broadest, um, have the broadest um, identification of where we're going. And so that makes sense to me. And Darcy? Is there a way to um, uh, well, I, nothing. I, I retract my comments. I, I I can see what Andra and Adele are saying. Um, I would just like to foreclose um, you know, non-local, non-equal to class one rec possibilities. And I think in the point that Mylene is making is obviously that this doesn't lock us into anything specific. And I agree, my feeling has been we should be with a more general that gives us more um, bandwidth to sort of do something else. So, um, and Tom? I will support that. Uh, I'm, we're trying to guide towards best practices. I, I, I um, it's it's very difficult. It's perfect versus good, almost type of thing. Um, so I'd be open to um, setting setting the uh, the goal for the perfect, but <clears throat> enabling the good as a pathway to get there. So, okay, options. Great. So I think that's your answer, Marlena. So that's the way we'll go. Okay. All right. Could you repeat the language one more time so I can put it in the notes? Um, you know what, Darcy, I can look at the recording and fill in any blanks if you. Oh, okay. If you want. Okay. So, sorry, I just lost my agenda here. Okay. Um, was there anything else about the letter drafts that you needed or the letter draft? Um, so I guess I just, it would be great if I could get like a written sign off on the three versions, um, <coughs> excuse me. And on that, um, as I said, I did a slight revision to your introductory text to make sure you're okay with, with that as well. Okay, um, and then I had in my email on the 30th included just some questions about the website. Okay, let's go to those actually. Sorry, Sorry um, the, I thought we weren't doing the three different versions. I thought we were doing the most general version. Oh, so there's a requirement. We need to do all three versions. The question really was, what is the language in the version that accommodates a non-mass class one rec scenario? 
Okay. But when you do need to submit the mass class one rec version, that's the one you're most likely to use, certainly right now. We have to submit this broader version, and then we have to submit the one with custom market pricing for very large customers because that's accommodated under the way the contract is built. Okay. And, and if we don't, the DPU is just going to come back and ask us to do it. So we should just do it. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to find your questions. It's in the bottom of the email on the 30th, um, the very bottom of it, last two paragraphs. Okay, sorry, I've got, um, <laughs> this is quite a thread. The here's what I propose. Is that the one? Uh, uh, yeah, below that, that, that language is in this email and you go right. below that. Um, on the last two paragraphs says, I want to touch base on the website and Got then um, those two paragraphs. Okay. Why don't I just, let me just open, oh my goodness. I was just going to say, let me open that email. All right, I'll just share the email and scroll down to that paragraph. Oh, let's see. Okay, sorry. All right, so you all should be seeing the email. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to just go over that then? Yeah, so I think that that the penultimate paragraph, I think we've already addressed. So the one question I had was about the domain. So it sounds like your domain ownership is expiring um, later this month. Correct, <laughs> on the 27th. Okay, yep, so I put that in my calendar for us to go ahead and pick up that domain once it expires. So we'll just buy that. And then once we own valleygreenenergy.com, we'll redirect it to the website that we set up, which leads me to the next thing, which is there is a website that's set up. Um, we're still in the process of proofing it, but the, the pages exist. Um, this does not replace the need for each community to have web pages with downloadable versions of the documents we've been working on. So there is, just to clarify, there is there are two parts to web content from the DPU's perspective. There is the requirement that each community has to have a web page that has the files that we're making available to the public available. And I can give you kind of like what standard text is that communities typically use on those web pages, but they do need to exist and we have to show screenshots of them to the DPU as part of your filing. So that's, that's one piece, but then separately, we build and maintain a program website that has all the detailed information that eventually will have self-service forms on it and that we up to date on a rolling basis to meet regulatory requirements. This is a more detailed, robust web thing. So that's the thing I'm talking about right now. So once valleygreenenergy.com exists, we'll buy it and we'll point it to the website that we're managing. Um, so that's, I think that penultimate paragraph is kind of addressed based on knowing this domain being available. As part of that website though, there's room for a big picture on the home page. Um, I've added some placeholder stock photography, which is supposedly from the Connecticut River that's out in your area. Um, I can buy that image and use it, but if you folks have a high resolution image or photograph that you'd like me to use on the website, I would be delighted to use it. Um, so I just wanted to flag that too. Some people care a lot about that image. Others are happy to have me go and find something. So that's entirely up to you. So that's what those two paragraphs are about. Um, with those details in place, that website that we're building is finished. This email does not address the municipal web pages, but we can talk about that right now if that would be helpful. Um, focusing on one thing at a time. 
Sure. I would just say if you came up with an image, maybe just float it by me and I can float it by the group. Yeah. You, so, you know, send me some, mo well, I narrow it down. You know, I just say choose an, an image and let us know which one you're thinking about and we'll just take a look and say yes, fine. Yep. Because so I think. No, I was just going to say, I'm sure we all, each community probably has their own stock images, but I just trust if you find something that you think represents us, I'd be happy to just go with, you know, an image and share it with the group. That's great. So that link that you see there, which says we've got a preliminary website together, if you click that, mm -hmm. we'll go to the home page and you'll see the stock photography image that okay. I stuck with. So yeah, you can take a look at that already. It's just got a bunch of watermarks on it because that's what stock photography looks like when you haven't yep. painted it. Okay. Just like landscape Connecticut River image. Okay. Do folks have any feelings about, I mean, you know, understanding that we're representing three communities. I think in, if anyone has any opinions, just sort of, jump in. I can't really see you all at the same time. So just. Do we have access to this uh, website? What do you mean have access to it? You mean like just to look at it? Yeah, it's just their web pages. Sure. Um, I, I think what I'm asking is, uh, has, has Stephanie forwarded that to all of us? I don't have it. I haven't I haven't looked at it yet and I haven't had it yet. Okay. This is their page. Yeah, this is their page. Right. I, 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 yep. I would like for all of us to be able to look at their page. Yeah, no, I'm not. I haven't not shared anything yet. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so this has to be revised still because um, I think I took some of the language in here from some of the early language, uh, Stephanie, that you gave me from the letter and I'm looking at it now and realizing I need to revise it. But um Yes, this is these are web pages that you folks should take a look at um, for sure. Yep. Thank you. I like that photo. If it's a stock photo, does that mean that it appears on some other website? It, yeah, it could. Yep. I mean, I, I, I buy these from these enormous stock photography resources. So um, yeah, I think the only way you get something that doesn't appear somewhere else is if you personally either took it or we pay incredible sums of money for something that's really mm -hmm. unique and special. But I don't think it, it's coming from an enormous catalog of images. So I'm sure other folks have used it, but I'm certainly not aware of it being used on any other aggregation websites. Uh -huh. But if you oh, have a nice photo. Yeah, yeah, if you have something that you guys like better. Okay. And it kind of looks like all the hills around. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it could be any of the hill towns. Right. What I was hoping for. I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah, it's like generic enough that it could be anywhere. But it is communities. Actually, it is supposedly from your communities. It's not like it's just a generic river from yep. somewhere in the country. Is it actually supposed to be from your area? Yep. Yeah, no, it's so, great. Is it the Connecticut River? I'm yes. Assuming. Yeah, if it's not the Connecticut River, that would, I think kind of would be a problem. But but uh, if it's the Connecticut River, yeah. Yeah, that's what it says on the description of it. OK. Um, so I think we're good with the picture, moving past the picture. Um, so Marlena, is it, you know, are we at a place, are you going to make more edits before we all take a look? Are there things you need to do first before we start giving feedback? Well, I'm realizing that the like the Valley Green Energy purpose list there, I called from the earlier uh, text that you provided for the letter. And I don't think maybe we want to, we, I think we want to modify that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I could take a crack at it or, I mean, if that's something you folks want to do, you're welcome to take a crack at it. Beyond the first page, the content, and actually beyond this part of the first page, the content is pretty standard um, for what we would make available for any aggregation at this at this stage. Um, so you'll see red just indicates things that still need to be done 
you know, the files aren't finished once they are, I'll upload them and create links and, and I'll send them to you folks as well. And once the dates are in place, you know, you can see that's, that's what the red text in, indicates. Um, but otherwise it's a pretty standard chunk of information that, that we make available and you're definitely welcome to take a look at it. So I think the only, the only thing that really, I, I think needs revisiting is that very opening section. So just let me know if you want us to think about it or you wanna take a look at it and, and take a crack at it. Okay. I, I would, I honestly, at this point, I say just um, take a, you know, take a crack at it. I don't think there's, I don't think we need to sort of spend a lot of time wordsmithing this little piece just because especially if it's, you said there were things that were might be flagged by DPU, just I'd say just edit it and we'll take a look at it when you've got it fully drafted. All right, I'll do that. Um, and uh, any more on this page? Nope. Okay, I'm just gonna close it out because it's just easier to actually talk to each other. Um, okay, so uh, just to give an update, I've talked to our communications director about putting together our page and, um, you know, and so she's she's on it. She was the one who had the domains, um, had secured the domains for us, which she can no longer do. Um, because basically our town doesn't, we don't have a credit card for the town and you need a credit card to hold the domains. It's such a ridiculous system. So um, she's been using her own card for a lot of different things and for obvious reasons needs to stop doing that. So um, I told, you know, so the timing is good at least for you taking our Valley Green Energy um, domain, but also the Valley Green Alliance domain means it's also expiring on the 27th. So you grab that too? Sorry, you want us to, we can go ahead and grab that then as well. That would be great. Is that a dot com also or dot org? I think it's a dot org. All right, so it's valleygreenalliance.org and valleygreenenergy.com. Uh, no, I think it's uh, valleygreenenergy.com. I'd have to look again. I I had sent you an email. I think I'd have to double check well, my back. notes. I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get back to you on what the exact domains are, just so we know. Okay. I don't want to say off the top of my head. All righty. Yeah, and I don't, one thing we can do, so like we don't want to buy like every domain out there, but if you feel like there are, like you want to have the .com and the .org, but you're only going to use one, we could still buy both and we just point one to the other. Um, so, you know, they're still all going to the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should just do that, just buy .com yep. and .org for both. I think that yep. makes sense. Yep. One service we can provide, we have a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. We had one for a while, but for some reason, it we needed to not use it anymore. So I don't know what happened, but anyway. Okay, so um, what about Tom and Carolyn? Do you have any questions about the website? I want to give you an opportunity while you have Marlena here to sort of talk about the website piece for each community. Yeah, I mean, so with the um, so the web page. So I imagine that we would have a page on our website that talks about Valley Green Energy, and then just links right away to this, um, you know, landing page. Um, so I don't know that we would need really that much information on our page um, locally, but I assume that needs to be ready to go at the start of the uh, public comment period, right? So on the day that we say we're, we're opening public comment on May 2nd, then our all of our web pages have to be ready to go then, right? But really it's just gonna be linking to um, the Valley Green Energy, the Mass Power page that you just showed. So that should be ready to go, right? Yes, and mostly yes. So yes, everything needs to be ready to go um, once the publicity goes out for the public comment period in the presentation. Regarding the content, it can be very simple content, but you do need to actually have links to download the files on your page. Now that doesn't mean you have to host the files. We can host them and I can send you links to download them yeah. from our servers, but you do, it does need to, it has to be like a brief paragraph of text about the program, about the public comment period, how to submit, 
uh, comments, and then it'll be four links, like mm -hmm. download these files. So it's, it's very, very simple, straightforward stuff. Um, and then you can also include a link over to the energy, the website that we're managing. Um, but th the screenshot we need to show the DPU needs to show that the files are there on your like available from your municipal web page. So I think that's the safest thing to do. But like I said, you don't have to upload them or deal with the hosting piece as long as you can just get a web page built. We'll be able to do it. Can't, can't you just provide the source code? <laughs> have, you know, have it be done. And then the IT person can just upload it into any page. Yeah, so I can, that's what I'm saying. I can provide pretty straightforward content for everybody. Um, that, that you guys can then can use it's, it's very simple and then just so you know about this web page it needs to be available for the duration of the public comment and review period with these links to the files on it because the dpu is going to go looking for it so we're going to submit it as a screenshot but then the dpu separately goes and looks for it as part of their review if they don't think it's easy enough to find if they think it's really hard to find they'll flag that. So they're, they don't like it when they have to use the search feature on a website to find these pages. They want them to be in what they call, quote, a prominent location, but they don't define what that means. Um, so I would just recommend everybody try to find a permanent home for a Valley Green Energy web page and a link to that web page. This page should also exist after the program launches. And again, it's going to continue to contain very brief content at that point, just a brief introduction of the program, and then a link over to the website that we manage. But just think of this as a permanent web page that you just need to find a home for, kind of in perpetuity. And I think that's the piece, just to be clear about, that it has to be on in perpetuity. Yep. Okay. Um, any more questions there, Tom? Any questions? I'll just, I will definitely welcome the content. And so what I'm understanding is you have to be able to access those files directly from the Pelham <laughs> website, but then there can be a button that takes you to the Mass Power Choice hosted Valley Green Energy web page. Is, is my hearing of that correctly? Yes, yes. So there needs to be like the little list of the four files I'll give you guys, because I'm going to package everything up for download. And I'll give you guys links. It's going to be four files that the public can download. It's you have to list of these links yep. to them, and then you can have a yep. little thing that says go to the Valley Green Energy web website. Yep. Good. Good. I like the picture. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, I, I wonder on this point of the websites, if it would just be helpful to just step back and give a couple of sentence on like, why are there these two requirements? Because it seems like a whole lot of stuff and it seems duplicative. So why is why are the towns, do the towns have to do this? The reason is that the regulators, the Department of Public Utilities is trying to balance two things. One thing, they recognize these are complicated programs and they want a website with all the up-to-date detail. And so they recognize that's too much of a burden to put on municipalities and they let there be a separate site. And that's the one we'll manage for you and it's gonna have all the detail on it. And we're gonna keep it up to date with all the new requirements. So that's all gonna happen. But from the regulators perspective also, of course, these are municipal programs, and so citizens ought to be able to find something about it on the municipal website, and that can include a link to the program website with the detail, but from the regulator's perspective, it, the municipal website also has to meet, has to have certain things on it, and that's what Marlena went through, and that's what we'll provide the text for, but so that's the two things they're trying to balance. Too much detail to burden the municipalities with, but citizens ought to be able to go to their municipal website and find something. So that's those are the two things we're trying to accomplish. Okay. It's impossibly detailed when you're dealing with the with the regulators. And right now it feels like there's just a million little irritating things. And I'm I'm sympathetic to that. We'll get through it. Okay. And as you say, I mean, some of it, it sounds like a lot, but then once we actually do it, it's not quite as complicated. Putting together the web page is not going to be all that complicated. So um, okay. Anything else so we can, or we can move on? So the um, education and outreach section A, when we had um, talked about that, we had listed a whole host of organizations and contacts. And now having met with you and realized that we need to have, you know, 
evidence of contacting all these places, getting screenshots, wondering, um, and I know we already talked about this a little bit, but wondering how we can consolidate or um, make this less burdensome or should we revise our section A? So I think it can be less, <laughs> less painful than it might seem. With regard to um, doing outreach to a list of communities, we don't need to save the emails for everything you've done. Now, if so, for some communities, that's easy for them. They wanna just send an email and copy me on it, but you don't need to do that. You can also just do it. And then we'll say to the DPU, here's the list of organizations that we sent the announcement to. What I really think core that we need screenshots of or copies of, we need the final announcement. We need to have a copy of that in there. We need to have screenshots of the municipal websites with these pages and that I've mentioned, and then the announcement, you know, wherever it is on the municipal website where that the announcement is about the public comment period, like on a calendar page, or if there's a news item on the home page, we'll need to have that. If you do social media, and you just let me know that you did it, we'll get the screenshots. That's very easy for us to go and look up. If you do something on a bulletin board, it's tricky to drive all the way out to every, out there and somebody could snap a picture of that. DPU loves low tech, loves it. Otherwise, I don't think you need to kill yourself on the screenshots. Just let me know that it was done. And then we'll figure out if we need to get screenshots because everything else is electronic. We can go and hunt down social media, we can check to see if the local papers picked it up or not. Um, it's not something you have control over, but you don't need to send me screenshots of every email you sent to everybody or every form you filled out to try to submit something somewhere. You don't need to do that. Does that help? But we do need to provide, do we need to provide what we sent? Like just if we, so if we sent an email, we have to provide a copy of the email with a list of organizations. We don't even have to do that. Oh. I would say, I would say, don't kill yourself with that. I would say, no, if you sent, um, no, I think it would be fine if we said um, the announcement was sent out to this list of organizations, or you could just say, we sent it to everybody in the, in section A, and then I'll just go and grab the list from there. Okay. Um, so, you know, we sent it to these organizations, we sent it to uh, these newspapers, and, you know, these, whatever, uh, we posted it on the social media platforms. Um, I think that's enough as long as I have the announcement that was sent. If you manufacture something different from the announcement, like somebody gets really motivated and they're like, let me do a little informational flyer. I would need a copy of that. So well, anything else that we, so anything else that we produce as a group needs to be included. So any kind of outreach that goes out, they need the materials that were distributed to people. But yeah, they I, want. Can I rephrase? If it's listed as something we're going to do, we have to provide evidence that we did it. Otherwise, we can do whatever we want in addition. Yes. Yeah, so if it's listed, we have to provide evidence. What that evidence looks like can be less than it seems. The DPU wants to see the core of materials that are sent out because they wanna make sure two things. One, the public comment period is genuinely being presented, like that, that you're making a level effort to make that truly public. It's not some secret thing. So yes, we did something. And two, you're not selling the program as a savings vehicle. So that's what, that's what they're looking for with this. So they wanna see the announcement, they wanna see any materials that are created, which we haven't created any. So that can keep things very easy. Other than an announcement, we haven't, we haven't created so, anything so far. Um, and if I can add extra screenshots with us doing the legwork, I will. But so I think from your perspective, if you just wanna do the things in the list and then say, we did it, we can take it from there. I think just to be clear, if we do create something to promote the program that isn't in our list, we're not, I want to clarify, we're not required to submit whatever it is we created. 
or are we? Because you again, I yes, we so we are required to. If yes, so what's in the list is the minimum you have to do. That's what you're obligated to do. That's how to think of the list. If you do something extra, you're not obligated to do it. But if you choose to do it and you've created a material like a handout or a flyer to do it, then the DPU wants to see it. What, That's what the, it was. Okay. That's the piece I want to get to. So we can, as long as we're using the materials that are all being submitted to DPU, we can send them to anybody. Yep. But if we create anything at all that is about this program, we need to submit it as part of the package. That's yes. the part that I want clarification on. Okay. Yes. Yes. That feels very, okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So you don't have to create anything else. Um, if you do create something else, I would just ask, like, show it to us so that we can take a quick look at it and make sure you don't run afoul of any, you know, of these DPU rules before you send it out. And so it's fine to do that, but you don't have to do anything more than what's in that list. It's just, if you do, we got to show the DPU what it is. Okay. That's just good and, to know. And should an interested outside party create <laughs> some flashy, you know, other materials, that's not on the working group. Correct. So the DPU wants to see things that are official municipal communications. But if there is an environmental advocacy group, for example, that's in the community, but not an official designated representative of the municipality, then they have a lot more latitude in what they can say and do. And no, they, their materials and efforts do not need to be submitted to DPU and are not subject to DPU rules. <clears throat> So I want to be clear that we have that. Okay, so let's just say for full transparency and disclosure here, we are three community representatives here are part of a separate advocacy group um, that is supporting this effort, which is wonderful. What we want to make sure though, so again, you're saying that if they create something, they wouldn't have to necessarily run it by you either. I think there is a little intersection of your involvement in this committee and then your own group separately. So, I mean, they obviously know what we're working on, so I wouldn't expect it to be anything that would be controversial, but does that matter? I mean, if they're already sort of part of this inner circle, would you all want to see what they're doing or not? I mean, we have this situation in other communities as well, where committee members are also part of local advocacy groups. I guess the guidance I always give people is in what capacity are you acting when you are putting this information out? Are you acting in the capacity of an official designated representative of the municipality? If so, then whatever you're doing is subject to DPU rules. If you are not, then no, whatever you're doing is not. As a general rule, it can be helpful though, if you're getting confused about where the line is in your own life, to just try to always keep the savings disclaimer piece in mind. Just don't pitch the program as savings, just have a savings disclaimer. And that will help you to run a, like not run afoul of like a lot, that one little thing. Um, but I would not, I, I guess I would not kill yourselves trying to figure this out in part because like, so what's the risk? The risk is somehow some piece of information gets to the DPU that wasn't submitted, that they didn't know about, they were surprised by it, and it's breaking a bunch of rules. And the, and the reason they got a hold of it is because somebody's complaining and they felt misled. That's the scenario that we want to avoid that we're trying to protect you guys from. But it's also a very unlikely scenario, right? You're not out there pitching, selling, promising, so as long as that's, you know, you're, you're kind of keeping that in mind, you're not out there going, this program's going to save you $100 and it's guaranteed, and, you know, like you're not, you're not doing that. So it's not likely that the public's going to go to the DPU and say, these folks misled me. But that's, that's the scenario that, you know, that's, that's the scenario, but it, it's not something where the DPU has the manpower to go out and proactively look for stuff and say, oh, we found this flyer and nobody told us about it. That's not what's gonna happen. It's more that we need to show them what you're doing, show we're making a good faith effort to be transparent and then try to corral everything that's you know likely to potentially bubble up. But if it's something that's out there in the world we can't control, that's fine. It's, as long as you know it, it wasn't something that was an, done as an official municipal communication. 
the list of official municipal communications is typically pretty small compared to what advocacy groups do. And that's fine. Like, just take a, a narrow view of that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on that topic? All right, then I'm going to move us on to the CCA draft. And I think, um, Adele, you had maybe some specific comments or questions. Oh, you're muted, Adele. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Um, yes, I asked uh, to have this on the agenda because I, I would, I'm concerned about the lead community section um, because it's, it, uh, which, which is on page three, I believe, of the document, which currently says that the lead community oversees the consultant contract and other contracts. Currently, the town of Amherst is designated as to serve as the lead community. Now, we've only designated Amherst as the lead community for the purpose of the MOU. So we need to either delete this whole section or um, clarify that it's only under the MOU that Amherst has been designated the lead community and that we haven't actually even discussed um, what would happen when we once we form a JPE. We don't even know whether we'll need a, a lead community after we created a JPE that is governed by a board. So um, you're you're exactly correct about that. We put this language, we added this language to the plan because of the decision to file on the file the plan under the MOU, not the JPE. When you switch to the JPE, we would need to file an amended plan to reflect the JPE structure. So everything you said is correct. I, th I think we could. You know, this is all what we have in here now is just assuming the MOU and it would be revised when you're when you're under the JPE. Maybe we can just um, I don't know if this addresses it or is necessary, but you, we could just say the lead community um, or as specified in the MOU, the lead community oversees the consultant contract, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if, it, if that works for you, if that clarifies for you, Adele, or even that's necessary. Could you repeat that, Carolyn? I, I missed it. Well, it could just say under that section, um, as specified in the um, MOU, the lead community oversees the consultant contract and other contracts. Currently, the town of Amherst is designated as the lead community. That certainly works from my perspective. Um, Adele, does that address the, does that address the issue from your perspective? Um, yes, I, I think so. Um, it, it said, um, I hate to ask you to repeat it again, Carolyn, but, but it, but the way you modified the sentence, it's, it, you inserted MOU under the MOU, the lead yeah. community. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that clarifies it. And, um, and then w if, and when we, um, convert to a JPE, this document will have to be amended anyway. Right. I how, mean, how I would think that was just going to be taken out. It? How does everybody else feel about it? I'm I was just I was just saying that it would be taken out when we amend it, so. Yeah, I it means that I guess we would have to have an amendment anyway. So it wouldn't require an amendment only for that purpose because we would, if we were changing to a JPE, then we would be, amend, we would be amending the whole thing or we would need to amend this the, J, the CCA agreement. Um, yeah. So yeah, I had the same concern as Adele. Well, we're going to be taking it out when we become a JPE and we amend the documents probably. I mean, it sounds like you're thinking still at least a year. I mean, I know things might change at the DPU, but we don't anticipate that their timeline is going to change anytime soon, correct? For review? No reason to think so, but well, we also just don't know. It is a new administration. Maybe they'll be faster, but yeah, it's going to take a while. So 
it's going to take a while for sure. And Paul, is there any, do you feel like um, if it was left out altogether and just existed in the MOU that that would be an issue in the DPU? In other words, if that if that paragraph were stricken and there was no mention of the lead community at all, but it still existed in the MOU, um, that would be a problem at the DPU? Well, we can certainly take it out. And if they, they want it in there, they'll tell us. So they usually they want to know who's going to sign the contracts, but why don't we just take it out? And you know, they say, well, we want more information about the lead community, you know, how this works, then we'll put it in for them. But if it's an area of concern, we can just take it out and maybe there'll be a JB by the time they're done anyway. So we just fix the whole thing then. Yeah, that's the hope. So why don't I just take, I'll just take it out. I mean, I think once we start launching this comment period and get through this piece of, you know, putting the aggregation together, you know, we'll be able to focus just solely on the JPE, but just to get this piece through the gauntlet right now, it's just like focused. I mean, I know I feel, because there's a lot of other things happening too, <laughs> that we just focus on getting this piece done, forward, done, and then we can get back to the JPE and we can give it our full attention then. So. All right. So lead, lead community is out of there. Yes, happily. <laughs> and I just, um, <laughs> I'm wondering if it's, can you know, the very first paragraph, municipal aggregation plan says, you know, talks about Valley Green Energy is a joint municipal aggregation program design, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then it says Valley Green Energy was developed by city of Northampton and towns of Amherst and Pelham, the communities. Does it make sense to say operating under an MOU there? I mean, it just sort of, with Amherst, the lead community, I think it's if from my perspective, it makes sense to say who's the contact person, you know, who is leading this um, just for a, an understanding perspective from whether it's from the DPU or the our community residents. Um, and I don't know if that makes sense, but it it sort of seems like, okay, we're um, you know, the fact of the matter is Amherst is the point person, a point community, I should say. And so it seems like that's a piece of information that people might want to know. So I'm not trying to, you know, beat a dead horse here, but maybe it makes sense just to put something in that first paragraph then, as opposed to calling it out as a separate section. That, that's I, certainly I, fine from my perspective, which, I, however, you, you, we can make that, we could certainly make that work if whatever you guys want. I, I, my question is why? <laughs> you know, less is more. <laughs> Let, let's go with less. I mean, what's the downside? If we don't have it in there, does it just become a, a flag that we get questioned on or? Well, don't we have to submit the MOU anyway? That seems like something must uh, be required. We wouldn't as part of the initial filing. It's possible the Department of Public Utilities will ask for it. We don't know, but it's not part of the required filing. That's why they do require you kind of describe how it works in the body of the document, which is why I put in that text about the lead community, but they don't initially require the MOU, but they may well ask for it. Could we just include the MOU just so they don't have to ask for it? You know, I mean, then we already have it, you know, and then and then they know. Because the the point people are the consultants, not any of the communities. So we'll we'll find a place in the filing for the MOU. So that's in there. So they'll have that from the start. We'll take out that lead community paragraph that's a couple of pages in. And then I guess the only thing left is, should we add to the second paragraph there, the, the reference to the MOU and the lead community as Caroline had suggested, or would you prefer that we not do that? Well, I 
Paul, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? Sure. So I, I think the guidance I'm getting just to summarize is delete the paragraph about the lead community, which appears currently in the draft on pages three to four. Delete that. Add the MOU to the filing. So the DPU filing is a many hundreds of pages along with many exhibits. We'll find a place in there to include the MOU. So the DPU has that from the start. And I think the only open question here in my mind is Caroline had suggested in the document on in the second paragraph, adding a reference to the MOU there so that that second paragraph would refer to the MOU and the Amherst as lead community. And we can either do that or not, as you prefer. I don't know if it matters to you, Stephanie or Tom. It's, just, it's not really a big deal. I mean, if we if the MOU is in there, then they can see how this thing is functioning. You know, I mean, the language here also says currently the town of Amherst, which implies that it doesn't mean it's the, the lead going forward. So I wonder why this is that much of a red flag if it says currently. Doesn't uh, mean... Yeah, I'm I'm going to I'm just realizing time. I have a hard stop in like a minute and a half. and We haven't approved the minutes yet, <laughs> but yeah. I think, you know, like we're in this as a spirit of collegiality and community. And I think we can just I don't feel the need to, you know, to do to change to make these kind of changes. Um, we're we're, so we're keeping the, keep the, the paragraph. <laughs> yeah, keeping keeping the paragraph of the lead community in is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I think the word uh, currently yeah. for me changes how I'm reading that, and I don't think it's a problem. Right. I mean, That's Carolyn, unless problem. you're like, I want to take this over. Like, I'm happy that Stephanie is. Uh, I was thinking more that you were going to take it over, but that's okay. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, I have no problem with it. I don't have a problem with the paragraph. I was just trying to see if you know right. there was a compromise right. there. So let's just leave it in and move to the minutes. <laughs> so um, I just want to you know to be respectful. You know, Adele, I want to make sure again for me the word currently changes things. Are you okay with that? I mean, if we, we know that when we become a JPE, we're going to take this all out anyway. Uh, I would prefer at least adding under the MOU um, to that sentence. Thank you. Okay. So maybe we just add, so Paul add under the MOU? Yes. Okay. All right, great. Um, we only have a, a minute um, for the minutes and um, is there anything else on the CCA before we move on to the minutes for anybody? Okay, Andrew, are you good? Okay, I'm gonna assume she's good. <laughs> All right, um, Paul and Marlena, you certainly don't need to stay for the, um, for the review of the minutes. And um, I will say, I think we're gonna schedule another follow-up meeting at the end of this one, I think. Um, Paul had said that there may be a few communities that might be interested in sort of joining on early as we start this process. And I think we need to have a conversation about that um, separately, because I don't think that's going to be a quick conversation. And I think, um, Paul, if you think it'll be helpful for you to join us in that conversation, um, that might be helpful, at least for part of our meeting. Um, or, or just to sort of introduce the communities and why you think that might be a good fit for us at this point. Um, and I, this information only came to me like a few days ago, so I wasn't holding back. I'm just, I want, I thought we'd have more time during this meeting to talk about it, but we'll schedule another meeting. That sounds great. I'd be happy to participate in it. And I think, you know, okay. these things just come up. So I think these, these might fall off right, right away anyway, just on their own. So it was just yep. a a preliminary indication, but be a good thing to talk about at your convenience so we know how to deal with others as they come along. Okay, great. I would also like to add to that agenda for that particular meeting, uh, discussion of um, um, bills in the current in the legislature that pertain to municipal aggregation so that we can get uh, Paul's impression of those. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I mean, those two topics could take a chunk of time anyway. So, all right, great. Then we'll, um, Paul, we'll let you know. Um, I'll I'll check in with you about potential dates that work for you as well, and we'll come up with an uh, 
a proposed time at the end of this meeting. Excellent. So, so Marlene, if you and Paul want to jump off, you can because minutes are, you know, <laughs> you don't need to suffer through that. Thank you so much. Great. Appreciate your time. Thanks, okay. everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Okay. And um, minutes, real quick. Um, they were in the packet. Does any, and they had actually been sent by Darcy a while ago. Do uh, Carolyn or Tom want to make a motion? Move to approve. I second. Okay, voice vote, Carolyn? Yes. Tom? Also yes. And I'm a yes. So okay. sorry, thank you everyone. No um, worries, Tom, well, um, are, are you gonna be away for a while? I just wanna make sure because yeah, we need to- Yeah, I can still check in, but um, it's, I, it's really whether I'm in an airport or on an airplane or in a meeting, that's the only thing that keeps me away. Okay, <laughs> I will, um, I'll send, you know, we'll talk about dates in a minute and then we'll send them to you and see what might work. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. So long. All right. So um, follow-up meeting to discuss the items that were listed. I'm just going to pull up my calendar here. I think, you know, for me, sooner would be better than later. Um, the week of the 17th is just not going to be good for me at all. So I could either meet next week, if we did next Friday, the 14th at nine. Would that work for folks? I can do that. Works for me as well. Who knows? I might be too <laughs> heavily drugged after my surgery oh. two days before <laughs> yeah sorry about that andra um okay well let's um and darcy what about you yeah i can make it then okay. um, all right let's tentatively say uh april 14th at nine we'll see if tom is available and paul is available and i will send out an invitation to everybody and it'll just be primarily those two agenda items i think it's just the the discussion about adding people on at the beginning um or you know um waiting or then and then also about the bills the legislative bills yeah and, and there... we had talked also stephanie about the possibility of having a brief presentation from local energy advocates just to share the types of things that we've been doing. Um, one of which, our most recent of which was a vote to, and this was before we decided not to immediately go forward with the JPE to, we voted to fund um, stipends for community advisors. So um, we now have to figure out what to do about that. Um, but we have a bunch of other programs too that we want to tell people about. Okay, sure. Um, do we want to, uh, I, so I can only do an hour long meeting that morning because I have the solar bylaw working group next Friday. So could we put it on the like following meeting? Yeah. And maybe sure. we even have a meeting just about local ad energy advocates. You know, we devote an hour to you all talking about what you do. We don't have that. that probably much. won't take an hour. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, all right. Well, let's. Um, I'm just worried about. I don't want to short shift it either, though. So, um, I'd rather put this off on like the following meeting agenda, if that's okay. Or do you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, we. I. I didn't mean the next meeting. Okay. So, so there's still a quorum here. Um, I gather from what you said that. The question about adding sooner than later an, another community is not purely a hypothetical. Well, no, it is still kind of a hypothetical because, like Paul just said, they're considering. I, he gave us the name of two communities that might potentially be interested. I don't want to say them now just because I think they're just thinking about it. So I don't want to announce it now. Uh, I'll let him do that. Um, and they had conversations with him. So um, they are interested in becoming an aggregation, but they sound to me like they're in very early stages. And I mean, I don't want to have the 
big conversation now. My concern is that we're at a point where our three communities have been working together for a while. And I'm concerned a little bit personally about adding some other communities into the mix at the outset. Um, because I feel like there'd be a lot of catching up to do. And I, at this point, don't think we want to slow ourselves down in any way. And I don't also know how, you know, I, I think folks have some pretty strong feelings about the things we want to do with this to get it started. So again, you know, adding other communities in the mix might sort of change some of that conversation a bit at this stage. So anyway, we can have this conversation later, but that was my initial feeling about it when he threw them out there. So there's a couple, but again, I think they're just considering. I don't, they've approached him. So I don't think they're, I don't know how far along they are in the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Anything else? We're a little bit over time. Um, what okay. were the two things for the next meeting, Stephanie? The, they were uh, um, the, um, the um, potential for um, adding new communities to the intermunicipal CCA starting out, so out of the gate, like adding them now while we're moving our application forward or um, waiting. So a conversation around that. And then also the current bills that are in the legislature that are relevant to CCA. And Paul Gromer will be joining us for that meeting. Okay. Okay, all right. So next meeting, oh, uh, we have no public comment. So we have no one in the public. So um, next meeting tentatively right now, April 14th, Friday at 9 a.m. Stephanie. All right, thank you all. Thanks. Bye. Have a nice weekend.